We are on. You know what I'm talking about? We are on. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Sabbath Peace. I'm Ron Burgundy. Sabbath Peace. It's another opportunity for us to come together in here and learn the word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is a, uh, obtained by grace, not of faith, lest anyone should boast. What did I say? I said that wrong, huh? Mm, keep going. Obtained by, by faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast. By grace, not of works, lest anyone should boast and give him freely faith, as a by gift. faith, not of works. What was it? By faith, not of works. Yeah, by faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast, given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of, son, a gift of tongues, a gift of uh, prophecy, or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the Day of Judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, to the saints watching in on the camera, to the saints that we don't even know about scattered around the world, and peace to Sister Danielle and, and uh, brother, brother, brother Smith, brother Antonio, uh, on their anniversary. Uh, may Yah bless them. But no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent, that they might live. What we talked about last week. Last week. <clears throat> We talked about, remember Yahushua, he fed the people, right? So the whole bunch of people that followed him, he was teaching them. They was looking for the miracles. And uh, they, uh, he looked at him. He was like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? They, they probably hungry. And the disciples looking like, man, I don't know. I don't know how they about to eat. All of them. You want me to go ahead and send them home? Yahushua was like, no, I'll go ahead and have them sit down. You know what I'm saying? I'm sit their butt down. We can figure it out. So then he took a little bit of bread and took some, some fish. And somehow made the bread and the fish last until all the people ate. And then they even had leftovers with the little bit that we had. Um, so we looked at that and that was a huge miracle. That all the people was looking like, man, I ain't never seen no foolishness like that. And they must have liked it because they followed them around about it, right? They followed them around looking for more of the food, right? So it must have been good, right? So after that, he, uh, all the people kind of looked at him and they, they, was, they was ready to make him the king. So y'all remember the people started to rush him like, nah, let's make him the king right now. And at that point, he was like, uh, no, nah, I got to get out of Dodge. So he, he went on the, uh, I think it said the other side of the mountain he went, and then he had to go and cross the water. And so that's when they saw him. Y'all remember they saw him walking on water? They saw him walking on water at that point. And uh, let's, let's actually grab, let's grab it, because last time we read it from um, John 6. But let's look at the difference in the additional details that we get from Matthew. Uh, Give me Matthew 14. Give me Matthew 14. Let's start at verse 22. Young Zekai. Get this cover. At that time, here at the Tetrarch, heard... This is Matthew chapter 14, verse 22. Oh, my bad, 22. I'm about to say here at the Tetrarch. That don't sound right. And straightway, Yahushua constrained his disciples to get into a ship. Brother Daniel, what's going on? Hey, you coming to me? Oh, you are coming to me. All right, what else happened? Wow. Uh, and straightway Yahushua constrained his disciples to get into a ship and go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. Mm -hmm. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the, uh -huh. ship, but the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Yahushua went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. Right. So remember, we read the same thing over in John six. They saw him walking on the sea and they looking like, oh, that's a it, so today they say it's a spirit. But today, what would we say? 
That's a darn ghost. That's a darn ghost walking out there because you're in the middle of the water. You're in a boat. You ever been out on a boat, Harmony? So look, when you out on the boat, you surrounded by darn water. You know how to swim? That's your problem. You don't know how to swim that good. You know how to swim good or you know how to swim like a little bit? Mm, see, I already knew. So that's why you ain't never been on the boat. But once you learn how to swim, you're going to be like, I need to go get on the boat. Then you're going to sit on the boat and you're going to be in the middle of the boat and you're going to be surrounded by darn water in like a lake or something. And you're going to be, you know what I'm saying, somebody probably going to be fishing because that's usually what people do when they're sitting in the boat. And then when they're fishing, they're going to be doing that. Can I put you down, baby girl? Watch this. Watch this. They're going to be. They gonna be doing this. They gonna be sitting there fishing. They gonna be rolling that thing out. Then you sit there and usually chop. You know what I'm saying? You run your darn mouth when you fish. You sitting there like this, and then you looking over at me like, you know, over there yonder. You know what I'm saying? It's that another that And you waiting for something to tug at the fishing pole. That thing gonna tug like this. You know what I'm saying? You gonna go like that. And so in the middle of it, while everything is, you know what I'm saying? While you fishing and while everything going on in the middle of it, you gonna look up and you gonna see somebody walking, and you gonna be like. That's a darn ghost. You know what I'm saying? Like, what in the world? That's a darn ghost. I ain't never seen a darn ghost. And so that's what they were thinking about Yahushua, right? They were thinking like, that's a ghost. And then over there, they was, they was, they was looking at him trying to figure out like, what am I seeing? Exactly what am I, like, what, what's going on here? But watch what happened next. She's still scared. She ain't scared of her. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. Uh huh. But straightway, Yahshua spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be you, bid, the, uh, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Yahushua. But when he right. So then, so watch it. Say, read that part again. So Peter, Peter, he came out of the ship, and what he do? And he said, "Come." And when Peter was come out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Yahshua. So when Peter saw him, he was like, "Hey, if that's really you, Yahshua, then command me to come on out there with you." You know, Peter a little presumptuous. He looking like he looking like, "Let me, you know what I'm saying? If you could do it, I can too. Let me see." Right. So he told him, Yahshua was like, "Well, come on." That's how I like to imagine. I, I imagine Yahshua just walking out there casually. They looking like. It's a ghost. He said, no, nah, man, it's just me. You know what I'm saying? Peter like, well, shoot, if you doing it, tell me to come on out there. And then y'all, she was like, well, come on in. And then Peter jump out and he climb out of that thing and he get into it. And then now he walking on the water. Watch this. Watch what the book say. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to y'all sure. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and began beginning to sink. He cried saying, Lord, save me. Right. So now he's walking on the water, but it, the book say the wind, because you remember in John last week in John, we read that the wind was blowing super hard. Right. So the wind was blowing so hard that the water came above sea level. Right. So at last week, we, that's what it said. So now Peter jumps off into the water and he stepped out in there and now he walking. Right. And as far as he know, like, you know, what I'm saying this is normal. Then all of a sudden the wind start hitting him. And the book says boisterous. He's looking like, oh, whoa. So then he starts sinking. So imagine yourself like slowly sinking in the water. But you know it ain't nothing under there but a whole bunch of whatever down there, right? And so he walk, he's waiting in the water. He's like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. And then watch what happened. Watch what y'all should say. And he cried saying, Lord, save me. And immediately y'all should snatched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore did right? thou doubt? So look, he said, save me. Y'all sure grabbed him like that. And then he, he, then he banged on him. Oh, thou of oh, thou little faith. You know what I'm saying? He banged on him. He told him, you don't believe, boy. You know what I'm saying? I told you, come on now. What's your scary butt getting scared for? Right? Keep going. Watch this. And when they were coming to the ship, the wind ceased. Right? So that's, that's just another perspective. That's, a, that's additional details of what happened. What's going on, boy? When y'all get here? Yeah, that's just another perspective of what happened, right? To kind of to kind of show us that you know Peter stepped out onto the water too, right? Grab that's not y'all. So we we didn't. I don't think we read it, but go back to um, go back to uh, go back to Mark. Go to Mark chapter four. 
We might have read this. Give me, give me Mark chapter four. Chapter 15, chapter six, probably chapter six. Yeah, chapter six. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of, we, we threw it now, we got through most of it. <clears throat> This is Mark chapter four. Give me uh, verse 35. In the same day, when the evening was come, he saith unto them, let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there, and there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. Right? So now the wind is blowing, right? Much like when he was walking on the water. The wind is blowing, but this time they all inside the ship. And then the, the wind is hitting, the water is hitting the ship, right? So it's getting a little shaky in there. Watch what happened. There arose, a several of, there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, sleep on a pillow. They, what do you mean when he was in the hinder part? In the back. Yeah, that boy is all the way in the back. And what was he doing? The book say. That boy is knocked out. So look, you gotta imagine we in the boat. We in the same that same boat that Harmony was fishing in, right? We in that boat and we sitting there. And while we in the boat, it's rocking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody going crazy like whoa, because you know what you gonna do when the boat rocking back and forth. These kids nowadays probably try to swag, sir. You know what I'm saying? You remember swag, sir? But no, nah, you're going to sit in the boat and you're going to be like, whoa, whoa, trying to grab on to whatever you can to keep your balance, right? Now, imagine in the back of the darn boat, y'all, she was just knocked out, sleep. I like to imagine he was back there snoring. You know what I'm saying? One leg hanging off of the bed. You know what I'm saying? Just snoring. And so they looking like, what in the world? Watch what they say. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. Right? So now they looked at him, they looking like, how you sleep through all this mess? You don't even care? And after that, he woke up and the book said he rebuked the wind. He said, Peace be still. And after that, everything calmed down. Watch what they said in response. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly, and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Right? So they looked at him like, What kind of man is this? Like, what? This guy, when somebody say, What kind of man is this? What they're really saying is, This guy is different. We've never seen anything like this, is what they're trying to say. Right? So who does this remind us of? Right. Does this remind us listening to these series of events? Does this remind us of anybody? Jonah. Right. Jonah. Right. Can you remember, grab real quick. Grab Jonah chapter one. Tell me what verse nine says. This is Jonah chapter one. Let me see what verse nine says. And he said unto them, I am a Hebrew, and I fear Yahuwah, the God of heaven, which has made Oh, now you got to go back before that. Give me verse 5. Then the mariners were afraid. Uh, hey, look, look, Jonah say, Jonah say, I am a Hebrew. That boy, that boy Daniel, they're like, that right? You know what I'm saying? That boy Daniel, look, yeah, that right? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this is, uh, let me see what Jonah chapter five, uh, verse 5 say. Jonah chapter 1, verse 5. Then the mariners were afraid and cried every man unto him. Oh, okay, now we just got to start at one. I didn't realize it get popping right off immediately. The word of this is Jonah word. chapter one, verse one. Now the word of Yahuwah came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee to Tarshish from the presence of Yahuwah, and went down to Joppa. He found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof and went down into it 
right? So he paid good money and he jumped into the ship. But watch what happened after he jumped in it. To go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of Yahuwah. Right? He was running from God. Watch this. But Yahuwah sent out a great wind unto the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. Mm -hmm. And the mariners were afraid and cried every man unto his God and cast forth the, the wares that were in the ship into the sea to lighten mm -hmm. it up. But so now they throwing stuff off of the ship because they're trying to lighten it up. They don't want the they don't want it to all get knocked over and sink. So they're trying to lighten the boat and they're throwing stuff over the, uh, the ship because they're trying to keep from having to abandon ship themselves. Watch what happened, though. But Jonah was gone down into the sides of the ship and he lay and was fast asleep. So the shipmaster. Came Look, in. what happened with Jonah? He was fast asleep. That boy was knocked out, right? So just like Yahushua, Jonah was out there, right? Knocked out in the midst of this thing, shaking and moving and waves hitting and everybody going crazy. They throwing stuff off of the ship to try to lighten the load, right? Keep going. So the shipmaster came to him and said unto him, what meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise, call upon thy God, if so be that God will think upon us that we perish not. And they said, everyone to his fellow, come and let us cast lots that we may know for whose cause this evil is upon us. And right. So then they looking like, look, somebody is causing this because you got to imagine what they going through. They started off by just throwing stuff over. Right. They throwing stuff off of the boat, throwing stuff off of the boat, throwing stuff off of the boat. Then eventually they get to a point where they like, all right, listen, it ain't really nothing else that we can throw off of the boat. So now we got to get to the point where. We got to throw somebody off of the boat. So they said, let's cast lots, right? And casting lots is kind of like, it's just a game of chance, kind of like, you know what I'm saying? Like rolling dice or like flipping a coin, right? Drawing a straw, right? So they looking like, let's cast lots to see the reason why this, this water is going crazy like this, right? So then they end up casting the lots. And after they cast the lots, let's see what happens. Luke right down there. You get it? Or are you on mute? Did I lose you? You might have lost Brother T here. Let me see. Who back? Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, I can hear you now. What verse we leave off on? Jonah what? Jonah chapter 1 verse what? 7. It's Jonah chapter 1 verse 7. Watch the book say. So they cast lots and the lot fell upon Jonah. Mm -hmm. then, they, then said they unto him, tell us we pray thee. For whose cause this evil is upon us? What is thy mm -hmm. occupation? And whence comest thou? Mm -hmm. What is thy country? And of what people art thou? And he said unto them, I am a Hebrew, and I fear Yahuwah, the God of heaven, which has made the sea and all the dry land. Right? He said, I am a Hebrew. Right? I fear Yahuwah. You know what I mean? Look, watch this. Keep going. Then were the men exceedingly afraid and said unto him, Why hast thou done this? For the men know that he fled from the presence of Yahuwah because he had told them. Mm -hmm. Then they then said they unto him, What shall we do unto thee that the sea may be calm unto us? For the sea so they looking like they know what they about to do to him anyway, right? They already knew. They are they already look like they've been they threw off all the like, goods, everything they could off of this darn ship. So then they got to the point, like, look, man, this the storm like this, one of the gods is after us. You know what I'm saying? One of y'all is causing this. Let's let's cast lots and let's figure it out. Right. So you already know when they when something when the lot fell on somebody, what was they thinking to do to that person? Get your butt right off of this boat. Right. We already got everything else thrown over. We about to throw them over. So Jonah just came clean like, hey, hey, hey look, look, you who are doing this. He's the God of all this stuff. Trust me. He doing it. I ran from his presence. So the people looking at him like, why would you do something crazy like that, boy? Right. And then he looking back at him like, you know, what I'm saying? that's how I go. So then they looking like, you know what I'm saying? I imagine they all just looking at each other like, <laughs> <laughs> they ain't look at him like, so uh, how we going to solve this problem, Jonah? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, hey, Jonah, uh, how you think, uh, you know what I'm saying? How you think we should, we should fix this? You know what I'm saying? What ideas you got? Let's see what Jonah say. 
What shall we do unto thee, that the sea may be calm unto us? For the sea wrought and was temp tempestuous. And he said unto them, Take me up and cast me forth into the sea. So shall the sea be calm unto you. For I All right, he's like, don't even worry about it. Just throw me over. It'd be calm after you throw me over. All right? So that's what they ended up doing. They threw him over. That's how he got swallowed by, swallowed by the darn fish. All right? Because they threw his butt over. All right? And the most high God protected him in the fish. You know what I'm saying? But that's where Yahushua got it from. The difference is Yahushua, he didn't have to be thrown over. All right? Yeah. So Yah made the waters to, uh, um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? What word they use? Tempestuous. What? Tempestuous. Tempestuous. They made the waters. So y'all made the waters tempestuous, right? And at that point, everything's shaking around. Well, y'all did the same thing for Yahushua. The difference is Yahushua just woke up like, man, what's wrong with y'all? Uh, peace be still. Everything calm right on down, right? So this testifies to Yahushua, right? We, he just showing that he didn't have to be, he ain't running from God. So he didn't have to be thrown off the boat. All right? All he got to do is get up and say, everything relax. All right? He tell it to relax. Just like they wanted y'all to do here. They're like, okay, if we throw him off, maybe y'all tell the wind to relax. And y'all did. All right? After they threw Jonah off, y'all told the wind to relax. Y'all had power over that wind. So y'all sure had to show, oh, well, I got power over the wind too. Let's uh let's go back. This is uh John chapter six. Let's leave off. Let's pick off pick up where we left off last week. It's John chapter six. I think we left off at verse forty five. But you can bring me back to forty four. This is John chapter six, verse forty four. No man can come on as the father that sent me draw him. No man can come unto me except the Father which has sent me draw him, and mm -hmm. I will raise him up at the last day. Mm -hmm. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be all taught of God. Every man mm -hmm. therefore that has heard and has learned of the Father cometh unto me. Mm -hmm. Not that any man hath seen the Father except he which is of God. He said, not that anybody seen the Father now, except he that is of God. You know what I'm saying? Keep going. Watch this. He hath seen the Father. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me has everlasting life. I am mm -hmm. that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man right, this bread, so now you gotta, you gotta, you gotta understand that he's right, right now he's banging on people, right? This like, I mean, this would, this would be like, this would be like, this would be like. You being in your hood, from your neighborhood, talking about your OGs. You know what I'm saying? And then somebody walk up. He from your neighborhood too, though. But he walk up, and he like, man, boys ain't nothing. You know what I'm saying? What they did back in 73, please. You know what I'm saying? I do X, Y, and Z, this, that. Now, just talking big trash. And you looking at him like, we don't believe you really like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, uh, us personally... We don't believe you really like that. And you talking big trash about the legends, right? So he said, look, yeah, y'all fathers, they had, they had manna in the wilderness, but they dead. You know what I'm saying? Like, they dead, though. Read it again. Watch this. This boy, y'all, I don't, this is what I don't like. I don't like the way they be trying to play y'all sure. They be trying to play him like he just, oh, you know what I'm saying? Like he just did blonde hair ditz. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you know. Oh, I love everyone. How are you doing? No. This man walked in the middle of the crowd. Like, yeah, no, nah, y'all had, had man. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But if you don't come to me, now you ain't going to live. They make, let me, let like me get... a, uh, they make him sound like a hippie, like the dudes that smoke weed all the time. Yeah. He's, everybody love everybody. Yeah. He woke up like, he was like, yeah, so let me, let me explain something to y'all. You know what I'm saying? Y'all, uh, Y'all fathers had manna in the wilderness. But you got to get the whole conversation. Like before he starts talking about manna in the wilderness, he's talking about the father draws you and you come on to me and I'm going to raise you up on the last day. In other words, I'm going to make you live. Right. So he's talking about him giving people life, him bringing people back from the dead. That's his conversation. Then right after that, the man look everybody in their eye and say, yeah, y'all fathers had manna in the wilderness, but they dead. Read it again. Watch this. 
Because if you don't read this stuff and put yourself in the situation, you won't understand the grab. Listen, once you put yourself in the situation, you know what you're going to think? I'd have stole, I'd have start stoned this butt too. You know what I'm saying? I'd have, I'd have took, I'd have took 30 pieces of silver for that butt. You know what I'm saying? I'd have took it. Because he's talking reckless. Watch this. Keep going. I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. Mm -hmm. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. Any man right? So he's talking about himself like he's like this special person. And they're looking at him like, we know you special, but you're going crazy right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, you could do some miracles. I get you. But the stuff you talking about is not something that anyone has ever talked about. Like, this is not... You, there's nobody, there's no prophet that we've seen. We can't compare you to another prophet that came talking about, I'm the bread of life. And if you believe in me, then you won't die. There's, we, have, we don't have a prophet that like that. So we looking at it like, what are you talking about? The only person we can compare you to is Moses. Then he'd say, watch this. Watch this. Watch what he say about Moses. Keep going. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. The Jews therefore strove amongst themselves, saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? Right? So they looking like, what is he talking about? Why is he, ta why is he telling us we have to eat his flesh? Y'all have to understand, this is like, what? What are you talking about to us, right? Yeah, they looking like he can't he can't be saying he want us to eat it. Like he must mean something else. That's how we got looking at it like he must mean they can't mean that. That's what they're going back and forth with each other about. Watch it, keep going. <laughs> then Yahshua said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As right? So now listen. They already struggling with the flesh piece. Because they looking like, he telling us to eat his flesh. I don't fit. We can't. What does he mean? He can't mean actually eat his flesh, because that's crazy. That don't make sense, right? So they going, they going back and forth trying to make sense of what he's saying. You know what I'm saying? And then he hears that. He waits. And he say, yeah, my flesh. That's the bread of life. Oh, and my blood. You got to drink my blood. After that, everybody in the crowd going crazy. Like, what is this dude talking? I ain't never heard. I ain't drinking nobody's arm. But somebody get the, hey, get him. After that, we going crazy because it's like, this guy is off his right. Like, he was cool when he was feeding people fish and bread. But I don't know what he on now. Ever since he walked across that water, he's been acting different. He weird. He talking about eating flesh and drinking blood. Man, I ain't listening to this mess. I don't care how many miracles you're doing. I'm not about to listen to you talk foolishness to us. That's crazy. Eat your flesh and drink your blood. But he's doing it on purpose. He just started off with eat his flesh. They looking like, now, I know this is a parable. But what you mean? What do you think he mean by he did fuck it up? But they asking each other, like, what do you think he mean by that? Because they thinking this is a parable. But then after that, he is like, okay, that bothers you. Let me give you a little more. Drink my blood too, y'all. Now these people are like, what in the world is happening? Watch this. Keep going. You on mute? T. Hello? My bad. As like, he that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me and I in him. As, uh -huh. as the living Father has sent me and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread, on him again. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. Mm hmm. These things he said in, in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Many, therefore, of his disciples, when they had heard this, said, this is a hard saying. Who can hear it? Right. 
So after that, even some of his disciples was looking like that's when they left. I don't know, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't know, man. Like what he talking about now. I was with some of the other stuff, and some of the other stuff a little questionable too, but what he talking about now is a little much, man. It's hard. Yeah, it's hard boys. to like go along with this. Them boys, what happened? Them boys got up and left him too. Like, nah, he's yeah. his disciples. Cause it's cause cause that's our law. Right? Our law. Look, they grab uh grab Leviticus, uh, what I want, eleven? Is it eleven I want? Uh, eleven is talking about what we can and can't eat. Yeah, that's what I want then. Grab a Leviticus chapter eleven. Give me verse one. It's Leviticus chapter 11, verse 1. Because it's our law. You have to understand. So we kind of we kind of been we thinking with Christian brain, right? But just imagine, right? Imagine what's something Christianity tell you you can't do. I guess nothing. No, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> what's a, uh, Some of them, you know what I'm saying? The thing with the Christians, they all, none of them agree. Let me see. What else? What, what would a Christian? What's a what's an absolute deal breaker for a Christian? It ain't a lot. You know what I'm saying? That'd be like that'd be like a Christian. That'd be like going up to a Christian and saying, "Jesus ain't God." You know what I mean? Like it's like that's not okay for a Christian. You go to a Christian saying that is like deal breaker. You know what I'm saying? That's like going to that's like going to a Christian and be like. Jesus didn't actually die on the cross, right? What he did is he hopped off of the cross real quick, like the Muslim be saying. Most I got just took him off the cross real quick and nobody saw it. You know what I'm saying? He didn't actually die on the cross. You go to a Christian, you say some foolishness like that, Christian be like, oh my God! That's, it's like, what are you talking about? So that's how we took this because we know our law. This is Leviticus chapter 11, verse 1. Watch what our law says. And Yahuwah spake unto Moses and Aaron, saying unto them, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, These are the beasts which you shall eat among all beasts that are on the earth. What's right? Earth? So everything that's on the earth, all of the beasts that's on the earth, this which you can eat. Watch this. Whatsoever parteth the hoof and is cloven footed and cheweth cud among the beasts, that shall ye eat. Right? So he said, If it has a part in its hoof, Right? And it chews the cud. And what else? That you may eat. There's one more, ain't it? Oh, whosoever part of the hood and is cloven footed and chew it. Right? And it got to have a cloven foot. If it got those three things, you can eat it. So now when y'all was sure walking around, he looking like, go ahead and eat my flesh. Do we part the hoof? Do we got a cloven foot? And does he chew the darn cud? They just got done watching the man eat fish and in, 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 uh, fish and darn uh, uh, bread. At no point did they see him chewing the cud. You know what chewing the cud is, right? That's when you darn, you know what I'm saying? You, that's when the cow would eat the grass and then chew it up, throw it up in his own mouth, and then eat it again. Did they see Yahushua eating darn fish, throwing it up in his own mouth, and then eating it again? Like, no, he don't chew it no darn cud. They looking at their darn feet like, boy, your feet ain't darn clothing. You don't part in the darn hook. So when they looked at him, they looking like, this is unlawful. I don't know what he could mean about eating his flesh because it's not lawful for us to eat his flesh because he don't part the hoof. He don't got cloven feet and he don't chew the cud. That's our law. If we going to eat a beast, that it has to meet those requirements. Right? That's going to get your deer. That's gonna get your 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 um your uh your uh what's it called cow, cow right? Boob. That's gonna that's gonna get your sheep, sheep right? Huh? Sheep, goat, ox. Your goat, the yeah. ox, right? It's gonna get you a whole bunch of animals that you can chow down on now. Oh. But it ain't gonna get you no pig, and it ain't gonna get you no human being, right? That's against our law. Grab uh, Leviticus uh, a couple chapters over uh, 17. This is Leviticus 17. Jump on down to verse 10 for me, though. This is Leviticus chapter 17, verse 10. Because now he's going to tell you about the blood. You got to understand, this stuff is documented clearly in our law. It ain't ambiguous. It ain't nothing about it. So 
the reason why I like to view it, because you got to understand why these people wanted to kill Yahushua. We be looking at it like, man, they were just some haters. Because it's easy to say that. We do that in our own life. We don't take accountability in our own life. We be looking like, man, these people just hating on us, knowing we was on some foolishness. Knowing we was out here messing with people and poking and prodding at people, we making mistakes, and we benefiting from the mistakes we make while other people got to pay for the mistakes. And we think people just looking at us like, oh, I, they just hating on me. Ain't nobody darn hating on your butt. Your butt is darn out of line. You messed up. You don't take no accountability. You don't do what you're supposed to do. People notice it and they don't want to mess with you. People ain't being mean to you for no darn reason. Max, ain't that what I used to tell you? You was up in school. You were being bad. You'd be like, yeah, but it's because of X, Y, and Z trying to give me all them excuses. You know what I said? You know what I said? Them people ain't being mean. Your teacher ain't being mean to you for no reason. These people ain't being mean to you for no reason. That's how that thing go. And then what happened? He started taking accountability. He cleaned it up. Right? He ain't perfect, but he a lot better than he was. That's what it's here for. You got to take accountability. You got to move forward. So that's what I want us to do. We got to take accountability for the Yahoo Yow Shua behavior. That's a bad boy. We got to take accountability. We got to look at it and be like, Man, he was out here messing with people. So when he telling them, eat my darn flesh, they think about the law like, no, that's unlawful. Moses told us we couldn't do that. And what Moses says is law, right? Then he came back and he looking like, you know what I'm saying? Go ahead and drink my blood. Mm, 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 mm. Moses told us very specifically. This is Leviticus chapter 17, verse 10. Watch the book say. And whatsoever man there be of the house of Israel or of the strangers that sojourn among you that eateth any manner of blood, I will even set my face against that soul that eateth blood and will cut him off from among his people. If you eat blood, I will cut you off from among his people. But watch what else it say. For the life of the flesh is in the blood. and I. He said the life of the flesh is in the blood. So y'all, she was saying, if you don't drink my blood, you ain't going to have no life. But the book say, if you drink blood, you will be cut off. So they looking at it like, no, nah, that can't be the case. Y'all already told us we'll be cut off. Y'all already told us he's going to kill us over some foolishness like that. We can't play around like that. They're not listening to it. Right? Keep going. I will even set my face against that soul that eateth blood and will cut him out from among his people. For the life uh -huh. of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. Therefore, I said to the children of Israel, no soul of you shall eat blood, neither shall any stranger that sojourns among you eat blood. Right? So he's, he's telling them, he's like, the flesh, right? I mean, the, uh, the blood has the soul. That's what carries the soul. Right? So he's letting them know. He's kind of letting them know, like, hey, the atonement comes from the blood. He's kind of letting them know in the law, like, listen, the atonement comes from the blood. But when Yahushua ain't explaining that to you, all he's saying is, drink my blood. How are they supposed to take it? So that's why even the disciples looking like, I don't know, bro. That's tough. I, I like to do. I do. We rock with him all this time. But I'm going to keep it real. Half of the stuff he say, I don't understand. And now he say this. I don't know, bro. I don't know if he really would God. Right? And our law, uh, grab, uh, grab Deuteronomy 13. It's Deuteronomy chapter 13. It's Deuteronomy chapter 13. Give me verse 1. I think we're starting at verse 1. Because our law is very clear on all these things. It ain't nothing that Yahushua are doing right now that we ain't clear on, right? So it, it, he's, he's putting you in a position intentionally to make you choose make you be like you know what i'm saying am i gonna trust him or you know what i'm saying am i am i am i gonna go with my understanding of the law this is deuteronomy chapter 13 verse 1 what does the book say if there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and giveth thee a sign or a wonder and the sign or a wonder come to pass whereof he spake unto thee saying let us go after other gods which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. 
Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams for Yahuwah. Right. So he's telling, he's saying, listen, if there is a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and he come running around here talking about, yo, yo, yo. Watch this miracle I do or watch this prophecy I say in the book, say, and it comes to pass. In other words, I'm not just running my mouth, making up stuff. No, I'm actually doing wonderful things. Right. He said, and it comes to pass. He said, do not follow after that prophet. If they leading you to another God, which your fathers have not known. Right. So that puts us in a tight position. Our law say don't eat flesh. Our law say don't drink blood. Our law say even if somebody is doing miracles, if they talking about some God you don't know about, yo, but better leave them alone. That's what our law is telling us right here. So they looking at this guy and they like, I rock with some of the stuff you say. You definitely do a miracle. So you definitely special. But then all of a sudden you telling me to eat flesh, your flesh and drink blood. That's against our law. So this father that you keep referring to when you run in, you talking big trash talking about you exist because the father put life in you. And the only way we can exist is if you put life in us and to do that, we have to drink your blood. That sounds like a different God than what I've, I've grown up with. So now the disciples who got an affinity for him, they like him. They mess with him. But some of the disciples looking like, man, that's a tough one, bro. That's hard. man. I like to do. I don't know what he on right now. Honestly, the law tell me I should be stoning buddy right now. Like I should be. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm, bro, I'm just going. You know what I mean? I'm going to try to sit on this one a little bit because this one's tough. This is a hard saying. So they 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 begrudgingly are walking away. It's not like they they rushing off like, ah, oh, yeah, let's do something else. It's not like these is individuals that like never really played with them. These disciples, these not Christians. These not the followers. These not the ones that just came looking for. No, these are his disciples. These are the ones that stayed down with him. He was explaining stuff to these this group. Right. But then he they looking like, man, I don't know. Go back. This is uh, John chapter six. What verse we leave off on? Sixty. Sixty. This is uh this is uh uh what's it called? John chapter six, verse sixty. Many therefore of his disciples, when they heard this, said, This is a hard saying. Who can hear it? Uh-huh. Why when Yahushua knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, Does this offend you? What and if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? It is the spirit that quickeneth the flesh, profiteth nothing. Right? So he's trying to give him a hint right there. Like, when I'm talking to you is spirit. I'm not talking about the flesh. I'm not talking about the physical. Right? But he still didn't really break it down and explain it to him. But you got to take it into account. He said a lot just now. Grab, uh, grab Deuteronomy chapter 8. This Deuteronomy chapter 8, give me verse, uh, let me start at verse 1. Should be right at the beginning. It's Deuteronomy chapter 8. Give me verse 1. You talking now, huh? I heard you say it over there. Apple juice. I was looking at it. That was pretty clear. You know what I'm saying? Got that. All the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe to do that ye may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which Yahuwah swear unto your fathers. And then uh -huh. remember all the way which Yahuwah thy God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee, to know mm -hmm. in thine heart whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. And he humbled thee and, su and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna, which thou knew. He fed him with what? Manna. For what reason? Which thou knewest not. Neither did thy fathers know that he might make thee know that man that man does not live by bread only. Ah, uh, hold, on, hold on. Man doesn't live by bread only. Ain't that what he said? Yeah. He said he made him to know that man doesn't live by bread only. By, by what? But by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Yahuwah does man live. If you know the law, you know that y'all sure ain't say nothing against the law. You know what I'm saying? If you really know the law, then you know that y'all sure didn't say nothing against the law. Because all he told him is, hey, y'all had bread in the wilderness. Y'all father did, right? 
and they're dead. And that's exactly what our law told us. Man don't live by bread alone now. But by every word that proceeded out of the word of the most high God. So the only part that he never explained to him is you looking at the word of God. You looking at me. Grab uh, John chapter one, verse one. This is John chapter one, verse one. Watch the book say. He told him, he was like, listen, y'all fathers in the wilderness. Y'all had manna. Y'all thought Moses gave it to you, but it wasn't Moses that gave it to you. The father gave it to y'all. And y'all fathers, they had it. And the, they was manna. They had it. And they're dead. You know what I'm saying? He looked at them and said, and they're dead. Because he's looking at it like that's what the law say. Man does not live based off of just bread alone. If you think that bread alone is going to cause you to live, you're going to be just like the fathers in the wilderness and be dead. He said, but I can resurrect you. I can bring you back. Right? I can fix your little problem. Your little death problem, I got something for I got the remedy to that. But he said, you got to eat my flesh. Because he's saying, I'm the word. He's not telling you to eat his physical flesh. He's telling you to eat the word. Because man doesn't live by just bread. He said, you got to live by every word that comes out of Yah's mouth. Yahushua saying, I am that word. Eat. Right? Grab, uh, grab, uh, uh go, go ahead, go ahead and read this. Uh, this is, uh, 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 John chapter one, verse one. In the beginning was the word and the word uh -huh. was God and the word was God. That saying was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. Now watch this. Jump on down to verse 14. And the word was made flesh. And, and the word was what? Made flesh. So now when he tells you, eat my flesh, what do you think he's saying? Take the word. Ooh, how good y'all think I am? Let me see. Ooh, woo. How good y'all think I am? Give me Ezekiel chapter Three. Mm, what's the last verse in Ezekiel three? Forty, forty something. Yeah. Oh, I don't want three then. Give me Ezekiel four. What's the last verse? Sixteen is verse four. I mean four. Give me Ezekiel two. What's the last verse? What am I thinking of? Give me, what's the, what's the last verse of Ezekiel 1? Twenty-eight. All right. Um, it got to be Ezekiel 2 or 3 or, it can't be 3. Ezekiel, it ain't Ezekiel 3. Uh, T, help me out. See, see if, I need where Ezekiel had to eat the scroll. It's somewhere right there in the beginning. It's not five. I don't feel like it's three because three is too short. You said it was 20 something in three? Mm. Yeah. I think that's later, bro. It's like eight or nine, maybe. Nah, no way. It's not that's like early. It's in the beginning. It's the beginning. It's, it's after, after he saw the. This is Ezekiel. It is three? What verse? No, nah, we, we can't start from one. It's at the end of Ezekiel 3, ain't it? It's at the beginning of 3? All right, give me one then. It's uh, Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 1. I thought it was at the end of 3. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, eat that thou findest. Eat this roll and speak unto the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth and he caused me to eat that roll. He said unto me, Son of man, cause thy belly to eat, and fill thy bowels with this roll that I have that I give thee. Then did I eat, and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. He said, It was in my mouth as what? Honey for sweetness. Uh-huh. 
And he said unto me, Son of man, go, get thee to the house of Israel and speak with my words unto them. For thou art not sent to a people of a strange speech of our own language, but to the house of Israel. Not to not too many people of a strange speech and of a hard language whose words thou cannot understand. Sure, uh -huh. had I sent thee unto them, they would have hearkened unto thee. But the house of Israel will not hearken unto thee, for they will not hearken unto me. For all the house of Israel are impudent and hard, -head, hard hearted. Behold, I have made my face strong against their faces, made thy face strong against their faces, and thy forehead strong against their foreheads. And as an adamant harder than flint have I made thy forehead. Fear them not. Right? And we thought he was talking to Ezekiel all this time. They're talking about Yahushua. That's why when these people are talking to Yahushua, do Yahushua flinch? Have you seen Yahushua cry out like, oh, man, I wish they would stop being so mean to me and stop trying to kill me. No, the book say his face was hard against their face. Yahushua looking them dead in their face like, nah, you know what I'm saying? Y'all fathers is dead. You know what I'm saying? They were sitting there, they were eating manna, and y'all fathers is dead. Right? That got that. Grab, um, grab, uh, we read Deuteronomy. Hey, go ahead and go back to, to John 6. Where we leave off? John 6, what? Like 60 something? Uh, 63. 63? Take me back to, I don't know, 63. Take me back like four verse. Take me like, like 59. Also, I choose the Passover lamb. But the Passover, eat the flesh, then we drink the wine. Mm -hmm. That's later explained when he later on with his disciples. We'll do verse 60. Many, therefore, of his disciples, when they heard this, said, This is a hard saying. Who can hear it? When Yahushua knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, Does this offend you? What? And if ye see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before, it is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit. And they right? So he said, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit. So he's trying to explain it to those who stayed around. Right? What I'm telling you is spirit. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you are spirit. What else? Keep going. And they are life. But there are some of you that believe not. For Yahushua knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. Mm -hmm. He said, Therefore say I unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my father. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. <laughs> then Yahshua said unto the twelve, Will you also go away? Then Simon Peter and this is my favorite part right here. Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have right. So after him. that, Peter is looking like, where should we go? Right? Where are we gonna go? Y'all should ask him, y'all gonna go too. They left. He looked like, man, look, when I'm talking to y'all, spirit, it's life. The flesh don't profit nothing. Right? But that's all right. Anybody else want to go? Because remember, y'all made his face hard against him. These people ain't shaking him up. He don't care who go or who stay. That don't cause him to move at all. He looking like anybody else want to go. You going to go too? Then Peter asked, he looked like, man, where else we going to go? Watch what he say next. You have the words of eternal life. Uh-huh. And we believe and are sure that you are the Messiah, the Son of the Living God. Y'all sure. So now this might be the first time that somebody flat out told him, You him, you the Messiah. So, like before, they did want to make him king, which is essentially saying you the Messiah, right? But this is one of the first times that the his disciple just sat, and looked him right in the face, and said, You the Messiah. You're the son of the living God. Right? You're the Messiah and you're the son of the living God. 
That's different. If I called you the Messiah, that's one thing. Because the Messiah is the son of who? King. According to prophecy, oh. the Messiah is the son of who? Son of David, ain't he? Right? But also according to prophecy, oh, y'all lucky I don't remember this. We just read it too. Where is it at? It's, uh, give me, uh, ooh, y'all lucky I don't remember where this at. Uh, da, 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 da. give me first Kings. Mm. What is it? First Kings 17, maybe? What? That's it? I'm trying to figure out what you're trying to get at. Oh, I'm trying to get uh the prophecy of the temple. Or not prophecy, but when Nathan was like, Yeah, go ahead and build the temple. Oh, wait, never mind. That's Samuel. That's Samuel? Way back in Samuel? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, Samuel, duh. Give me uh, 1 Samuel 17. First Samuel chapter 17. It, it might not be 17, though. But let me see if I can get close. It might be a second Samuel. Huh? I mean, Second Samuel. Thanks. Yeah, Second Samuel. Yeah. That's it. Nah, you want Second Samuel? Uh, where is this thing? Second Samuel seven. Seven? Yeah. Okay, it's Second Samuel chapter seven. Is that early? Uh, we will do verse four. This Second Samuel chapter seven, verse four. Watch the book say. And it came to pass that night that the word of Yahuwah came unto Nathan, saying, Go and tell my servant David, thus says Yahuwah, Shall thou build me a house for me to dwell in? Whereas I have not dwelt in any house since the time that I brought up the children of Israel out of Egypt, even to this day, but have walked in a tent and in a tabernacle. In all the places wherein I have walked with all the children of Israel, spake I a word with any of the tribes of Israel, whom I commanded to feed my people Israel, saying, Why build ye not? Why built ye not me a house of cedar? Now, therefore, so shalt thou say unto my servant, David, thus says Yahuwah of hosts, I took thee from the sheep coat, from following the sheep, to be ruler over my people over Israel. And I was with thee, whithersoever thou wantest, and have cut off all thine enemies out of thy sight, and have made thee a great name, like unto the name of the great men that are on the earth. Moreover, I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, and they that dwell in the and they in that they may dwell in a place of their own and move no more neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them any more as before time and as since the time that i commanded judges to be over my people israel and have caused thee to rest from all thy enemies also yahuwah telleth thee that he will make thee a house and when thy days be fulfilled and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers i will set up thy seed after thee which shall proceed right so when, so so y'all told david when thy days be fulfilled and after you sleep with your fathers, what is he really saying to him? Die. He said, after you die, I'm going to make you a house. Keep going. Watch this. I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels and will establish his kingdom. He shall right? So he said, it's going to be somebody that proceeds out of your bowels and I'm going to establish his kingdom. In other words, it's going to be one of your descendants. I'm going to establish his kingdom. So that means according to the law, Right? Watch what he say. Keep going. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be he said, I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. So this is the Messiah. Right? This is where the prophecy of the Messiah comes from. Because his kingdom is supposed to last forever. So after our kingdom was taken down, after uh, King uh, Zedekiah, right? 
our kingdom was taken down, we look forward to the next king because we looking like, wait a minute, David was supposed to last forever. His kingdom was supposed to last forever. So the fact that David is gone and now the kingdom is gone, there must be another one coming. Then we start to get all these prophets that told us just that. It's going to be somebody coming that comes out of the root of uh, Jesse. The son of David going to come. Right. Then they start telling us, they start telling us, uh, uh, Daniel start telling us, I saw one like the son of man. Right. Whose kingdom lasted forever. So anybody who know these things, they looking at it like y'all told David that he would have a son and his kingdom would last forever. Then Jeremiah told us it's going to be the root of Jesse. Then Ezekiel told us the root of Jesse. And then uh, Isaiah told us the, I think, son of David, root of Jesse. I think Isaiah told us every way we could possibly know, right? And we connected all these things. And then it's one like the son of man from Daniel who is now telling us that his kingdom is going to rule forever. And then Daniel come and say the Messiah, which is to say the anointed, will be cut off. Right before the temple. So we you have to put all these things together. And now you have um, you have uh, you have Peter that say, I'm sold. I ain't going nowhere. You are the son of the living God. You are the Messiah. Right. He told him, you are the Messiah. In other words, the anointed and you are the son of the living God. Anointed is the king, right? So you are the king and you are the son of the living God. Let's see. Gra uh, keep going. Keep going. Let's uh, let's see what else you say. I will be his father. So we got to get the son of the living God part. We got the king part. That part makes sense. But that makes you the son of David. Where would Peter get the son of the living God from? Keep going. Watch this. I will be his father and he shall be my son. He said what? I will be his father and he shall be my son. That got that. Y'all said, I will be his father and he shall be my son. So now when everybody walking around and y'all sure saying, that's my father, that's my father. They think he's Looney Tunes. They don't realize if I didn't say that, I'm not even fulfilling the prophecy. But that's because these people don't know the scripture. They've been taught the scripture from people who don't really know it. And that's what y'all sure trying to tell them. It's OK not to know. That's why I be telling people all the time man, do not try to act like, you know, everything. It is OK to say, oh, no, I really don't know. <laughs> it's OK to say, I don't really know. I don't know what that book say. I don't know what this is talking about. I don't know what that means. I don't know this. I don't know that. I don't know this. Right. It's important to say that because if you don't know. Now you have space for y'all to teach you. But if you are walking around pretending like you know everything and you got all the answers and this, that, and the other, no, nah, man, you do that. Y'all ain't got no space to teach you. You're going to be like, okay, since you say you know, your sin remain. Right? Grab, um, uh, let's go back to John. This is John chapter 6. This is John chapter 6. Uh, whatever verse we is on. 69. It's John chapter 6, verse 69. And we believe and are sure that thou art the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Yahshua answered them, Have I not chosen you twelve? And one of you is a devil. Mm -hmm. Think of Judah, Iscariot, the son of Simon, for he was, for he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. That's the end of that chapter, right? Yeah. Okay. Next week we're gonna pick up and we're gonna read uh Mark 7. So we're gonna we're gonna pick it up in Mark 7, where Yahushua sure have a couple conversations with some of the Pharisees and, and he, he start to attract attack their traditions. Right. So we're going to we're going to pick it up at Mark seven next week and kind of go through that. Any questions on today's reading? On tonight's reading?
So the family said, I'll oh, think about Genesis 49. Talk about when Jacob was like, the scepter shall not depart from Judah. In relation to what? Oh, because of the, the prophecy of the Messiah. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that one tie in too. That one tie in too. But uh Will, I love you I love you too, Sister Sharon. I'll talk to y'all tomorrow, y'all willing. Um if y'all do get questions, don't hesitate to send them in. Text the number that's at the bottom. You know the you know the stuff. Um but let's go ahead and pray out.